Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. Now in this tutorial we are going to talk about ELB elastic load balancing. Now uh, this is a really important topic and whether you are preparing for architecture track or you are preparing for the sysops one, you need to know this properly, right? So first of all let us understand what a uh, what this ELB is about and after that we'll go ahead and create an ELB from scratch. We'll put a few web servers behind that and we'll make it work, okay? Now ELB is, uh, it is a managed service uh, from Amazon. So you do not have to basically worry about its uh, scalability or high availability at all. Uh, it does two major things. First is that it will distribute the incoming traffic to n number of instances which are registered to the ELB. Right, and second is it does continuous health checks uh, for the instances which are registered, which are registered to it. In case any instance becomes unhealthy, right? For example, it fails the health checks, it becomes unhealthy. ELB will stop sending the traffic to that particular instance. Okay. Now let us quickly understand few things, and then we go ahead to the demo. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, this is the symbol for the ELB, right? And then these are the EC2 instances. Now, an ELB can be public or private. Depending on the need, you can put it. If you put uh, an ELB in front of web server, uh, which is going to accept the traffic from the outside world, meaning from internet, that would be a public ELB. Sometimes people also use an ELB as private between their web server, web tier, and their app tier. Okay. So, and how and how do you how do you decide that whether it, it is a public or private? While creating the ELB, you will have to choose the subnets where the ELB, you know, the subnets which ELB would use, and those uh, whether those subnets are public or private, that would define that would decide whether your ELB is public or private. It is highly recommended that you choose two subnets which are there in two different availability zones to launch the ELB because uh, that would follow the principle of high availability as AWS recommends that you should be running anything into two different availability zones. So when you choose two uh, subnets which are there in two different availability zones and you launched ELB. ELB internally creates instances in both the subnets, right? Uh, which are there in different availability zones, of course, and it is the work of those two internal uh, those two internal instances that they will go ahead and further distribute the traffic. Okay, so internally ELB also launches the instances and uh, during that launch it will consume the private IP from your subnets, the subnets which you have chosen. Uh, hence, you know, you need to keep some buffer in terms of private IP address in your subnets, okay? Because let's say when the traffic increases on your website, the CLB will expand because just one one instance in both the subnet would not be enough. And hence it will go ahead and launch more instances inside ELP and that will eat up on the private IP address of your subnet. So you need to plan for it. Uh, once you use uh, ELB in the public subnet, you can even move your web server to the private subnet and keep only your ELB in the public subnet, hence exposing least number of resources into the public subnet. Because you know, within a VPC, all instances can talk to each other irrespective of the, irrespective of the subnet in which they are there, right? So that means your ELB can be there in the public subnet and your web server can be there in the private subnet, no problem at all. Uh, the traffic gets distributed between the two availability zones in round robin fashion, right? So let's say I have given two subnets, one in AZ A and another one in availability zone B. Then first request will go to A and second to B, and then in this way, round robin, it will go, it will get distributed across two availability zones. Now within an availability zone, there might be n number of instances, n number of web servers you might be running. So the next request goes to the instance which has the least number of open connections. Um, also, uh, an ELB should be accessed only using its DNS and not by IP address because DNS remains fixed, the IP addresses keep changing. So best practice is to access it using the DNS. Also, while you are creating the ELB, you have to be very careful with the health check. So we will take care of these things and we'll show you how to do the same, right? Now, let us go ahead and uh, see what we are going to do. So in the next uh, few minutes, we will go ahead and create an ELB from scratch. Uh, there will be a VPC, and I will create four subnets in that. Two will be public, and two will be private. Uh, and uh, they'll be across two different availability zones, A and C. 
right? And then we'll go ahead and launch ELB in the two public subnets, which will internally launch instances. You will not be able to see those these two instances that are part of ELB. You don't, cannot go ahead and log through those instances. Internally, it gets launched, right? And um, we will go ahead and keep our web servers in the private subnet, right? In the availability zone and A and availability zone C, we'll keep the uh, web server. And after that, we will register these uh, instances to our ELB and then we will hit the public DNS of this ELB and we'll see whether the traffic is coming through. Okay. All right. So let us go ahead and get started. I'll first go ahead and launch an instance. Now, I've prepared an AMI already. It is very simple. All this AMI has as let me uh, before going here. Let me show you the VPC structure. <coughs> so, as you can see, we have got a VPC here. This is my VPC with slash 24. It has got four submits. Right. So there are two public and two private. Right, to public and to private, and you can see the availability zone A, A and C, A and C. Right, you can check the route table as well. Private ones don't have anything, <coughs> and those which are public, they have got a uh, route to the internet gateway. All right, so this is good. And after this, so I'll just leave this tab open. We'll go here and first we will launch. The private uh, the web servers in the two private instances so this one private a and private c so i'll go here so t2 micro is fine i will choose my vpc and i want to do it private okay and i'll leave this default and i'll call it server one and uh, just stop that. I actually have a security group created here, which uh, just opens port 80 and port 22. Basically, so I'll go ahead and go next and uh, go ahead and launch this. Okay, the first instance is launched. Um, see that it is launched in the so I'll just go ahead and filter so that we see only the relevant ones so this one is launched in the subnet uh, okay here it is 62 which is the private A so next one I will launch in the private C so I'll just do launch mode like this so that all the things will be just picked up same we'll just go ahead and change this part and we will launch this into another one which is private this server two i'm just going to leave like this i'll just update the first server two okay and this will be the fine to we'll launch this okay so both of our instances have come up uh, we'll just go ahead and filter this so they should be up just in a moment we'll go ahead and launch our load balancer by that time <coughs> also create load balancer we are going to do classic load balancer i'll cover application load balancer in a separate tutorial after some time so i'll say test ELB, right? I'll just give you a name. Then I want to create it in my VPC. I don't want to make it internal, and so I'm not checking this. This is uh, so if you don't check it, it's basically public, right? And uh, also, you need to go ahead and choose here. So you can see all the four uh, subnets are being shown, but I want to launch it in my public subnets, and hence I'm selecting it. Selected subnets, both the public ones, okay. And I want to let my uh, load balancer run on port 80, and my instance also will have their web server running on port 80. Okay, great. Next, 
uh, we need to choose a security group. Uh, there is one which I have created. This actually just works fine. I'll go ahead and select. And then you need to configure health check. Now, uh, if you know the URL of which is which would be available on your web server, you can go ahead and configure that. I know what would be the URL, so I'm going to put that. Uh, in case you don't know, you can just go ahead and do TCP as well. If you just do TCP and say the port on which your web server is running, that also is just enough. But I'm going to define this because I know it. Uh, I'll make this interval somewhat lesser so that the check happens frequently and I'm reducing the healthy threshold so that my instance becomes healthy soon, right? Only when your instance becomes healthy, only after that, the traffic will start going to your instance. So I'll choose the two instances, server one and server two. Uh, two important things here you have enabled cross zone load balancing and connection training what are these two things so uh, here is the thing <coughs> if cross zone load balancing is not enabled what happens is this particular in, in instance or from this availability zone when the when elp is trying to distribute the traffic across n instances here right it will just look at these three instances and it will sent to the instance which has the least number of open connections so and this one will do same way for this now this works great if there are equal number of servers running across the two availability zones but think of a scenario if it is unequal here there are four here there are two then the distribution would not happen equally so if you go ahead and enable cross zone load balancing what would happen is this particular internal instance will look at all the instances here meaning here, let's say four are there, here two are there. So it will look at all the six and whichever instance has the least number of open connections, it will send the next request to that instance. It, that instance could be in this availability zone or in the subnet as well, right? So in case you have equal number of instances, you may choose to uncheck this thing as well. I'm just leaving it for now. What is connection draining? Now connection draining is something, it is recommended that you enable this and you this is the default time, you can change this as well. Connection draining, is the time which you give to the instances. Let's say an instance is marked unhealthy. Now there are two options. One, you can go ahead and just, uh, you know, ELB can close all the already open connections to that instance as well. That might not be a very good thing. So you, ELB will give 300 seconds for that, uh, you know, to that instance, to that unhealthy instance, so that already open connections which are there to that instance, that it will get a chance to complete those, right? Though as soon as an instance is marked unhealthy, it will stop sending any new traffic to that instance. Okay, so please enable this. Let's go ahead. Next, I'm just leaving this. I'll go ahead so you can create. So this is getting created. Okay, so I paused the video just for a few seconds. So our ELB is is created, and if you go here and look at the instances. The health check is done and it is successful. Our instances are there in service. Great. Let us go ahead and access our ELP. We'll access the, with the DNS name. We'll open it here. Wow. The page comes. Now I will go ahead and uh, just do one thing. Let me go ahead and access my application, which is there at slash server slash index.php. You can see that it is going through. It is just a simple uh, application. It uh, shows an image and it also shows the IP address, private IP address, or the basically the private DNS of the instance which is serving. So let's go ahead and refresh this. It goes to 97. Refresh again, it goes to 140. 97. 140, right? So it is doing in a round robin manner. So I hope you understand what ELP is, how to create an ELP, how to have your in create your instances the two instances which i created are there in the private subnet and they are just registered to the erp uh, i did not show you the setup part so it can be just any web application which you have set up on your uh, instances i had i had the web application set up as part of the emi itself or you, know, you can go ahead and do it manually i hope you like this video uh, and uh, if you understood it please go ahead do some comments Share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Bye bye.